Welcome back, everyone. Our next session will be with Elon Ponomansky asking, why aren't you using VPC service controls yet? This session is sponsored by Indeni. Indeni offers CloudRail, which is an advanced IAC security tool that includes policies like CIS and PCI. The CloudRail framework allows you to embed IAC into your org in days, not weeks. Thank you, Indeni. And if you have questions during the presentation, please post those in Slack. Over to you, Elon. Hey, everyone. My name is Elon, like Elon Musk, give or take a few billion dollars. Uh, I'm the principal cloud security consultant at ScaleSec, so feel free to throw any questions you have um, in real time and I'll, I'll try to answer them at the end. My talk today is centered around VPC service controls and Google Cloud, but to understand what they are, I have to explain data exfiltration. So I'll do that through a story about a fictional company worth only a few billion dollars. Uh, this is totally fictional, never happened to any company you know of. Uh, so let's jump to seven months ago. The company is alerted to a critical vulnerability in a public facing service, doesn't patch it because it's a large enterprise and uh, they would need 10 managers to prove it and no one wants that headache. Six days later, security teams get alerts about some unexpected logins. It's probably fine they think because we're a large enterprise and nobody can breach our perimeter. So fast forward six months, uh, the company finds out a bunch of their data was found for sale on the dark web. Okay, time to sell our stocks, said the executives. After the trades finalized, the company tells the press and the government, the breach was the work of a highly sophisticated advanced persistent threat using attack methods never seen before. So this might sound familiar to you. Uh, ask your neighbor if you don't know what I'm talking about. Um, so what happened there was data exfiltration. Attackers were able to take data from the company and transfer it to their own systems. Sometimes the theft is for extortion, like with ransomware. Um, sometimes it's to steal personal data, like you know, a certain nation state who won't be named. Sometimes it's rival companies want info on their competition. But it's a serious problem that affects all of us, all of our information. Uh, licenses, social security numbers, everything has been compromised countless times and it's just all over the place. So what are VPC service controls and how would they have helped? To answer that, I have to go on another tangent and explain how resources in GCP work. So uh, this is the hierarchy of resources in GCP. If you're not familiar with it, I'll explain because it's important to understand. So at the top, we have your organization. So if you're a company, and you're making a GCP thing, you would start with an organization. Uh, you can think of that as like your Active Directory root domain, um, something like that. So everything, this is a container for everything under it. Um, and then under that, you can have folders. Uh, optionally, you can have subfolders, uh, and then you have projects. So you can have projects at the root level uh, or in folders. And you can think of projects like individual accounts, and all the resources, generally speaking, are scoped to projects. So the important thing to understand right now, just that resources are scoped to projects and projects are kind of like their own containers of resources. Um, so you can control IAM access at the folder project resource or org level uh, more at the same time. So there's a lot of uh, access control that you can do at each level. So I'll go over the components of VPC service controls, and then this will make sense in, in two slides uh, when I put it all together. So the first thing to understand is a perimeter, and that's the thing that encapsulates one or more projects. Uh, many projects can be in one perimeter, but only one perimeter per project. So the perimeter is your security boundary. So you have to allow access in or out. And then you have restricted services. So a perimeter by itself won't actually do anything. Uh, if you ever tried, you could create a, a service perimeter and then you'll still be allowed to do anything because you have to select which resources to restrict. Those are called restricted services. The best practice generally is to just protect all data services, even if you don't use them, uh, just in case you know someone creates some data service like cloud storage bucket or whatever in there, uh, you have that protected. And then obviously you can restrict whatever other service you're using. And then you have rules. 
So you have ingress or egress rules. So you can define uh, per API and then per specific method uh, how to access a project. So for example, um, you can allow ingress only access to BigQuery via the read rows method. Um, and so every other method would be blocked and all egress would be blocked. Uh, you can also use perimeter bridges and that's a one-to-one -to -one perimeter -to perimeter relationship. And that is full access. So you can't limit uh, with uh, granular rules like you can with ingress and egress, um, but it's simple to set up and that's a one-to-one -one map. And none of these are transitive either. And then you have access levels um, and that's a context-based access control method. So that allows you to define things like site arranges, identities, or device profiles that are allowed in the perimeter. And I'll talk about that more in a second. It's basically like a configuration file that gets referenced. So if we put all of these things together, you can create a rule, which is something like allow only human users to access BigQuery from the internet, and then only these service accounts from this specific site range, which is pretty cool if you think about it, uh, because you can you can completely differentiate where the access is coming from based on all these different things. Uh, and again, that's on top of IAM, regardless of whatever access control permissions you have. And then the last two components is you have private Google access. Um, that's a way to access Google APIs to using private endpoints like AWS private link, if you're familiar with that. Uh, and that's, that's essential because um, you need a way to restrict uh, where the access is coming from. That'll make sense in a second. And the last thing is VPC accessible services. Um, that's a way to define which APIs can be accessed on your network. So for example, if you have a VM running in a perimeter uh, and then you have other resources inside that perimeter, um, all traffic inside a perimeter is unrestricted within within the perimeter itself. But if you use VPC accessible services, you can say that anything on this VPC can only access this API. So regardless of what permissions the VM has, you could prevent it from accessing anything except something like cloud storage, which is pretty cool. And then uh, the last part is you can create hub and spoke models if you want to. So if you have uh, a centralized logging project and you have you know 50 projects, you can create either bridges or ingress, egress rules between them, and they're non-transitive again. Um, so you can have communication to some kind of centralized project or admin project, whatever it is. So we'll start putting all the concepts together. So this is an example, multi-tier application architecture in GCP. Um, and I prefer GCP uh, these days, honestly, because of the way projects work. It's just a lot easier to use unlike AWS's hacky approach with organizations. Um, so these projects are doing different things. So on the left, you can see the data ingestion project, uh, which has a pub subtopic. If you're not familiar, that's basically SNS and SQS. It's like a messaging service uh, combined. Um, and that's taking in some kind of message. And then you have a data processing project where a cloud function pulls data from there and does some stuff on it. And then that goes to a data storage project, which it gets written to. Uh, and this is fine, like architecturally, but you have an attack surface of the whole everything, like everything you see. So you're really at this point relying on IAM access to gate access. So if you look on the red square on the right, projects from either your organization or some other organization um, malicious project or whatever can still access them if they manage to get credentials, uh, escalate privileges, whatever it is. But now if we add VPC service controls, um, now we have protections against that. So we'll start from the top. We have the access levels like I discussed before, and there's two of them here. The first one um, allows anyone in that access level access to the data ingestion project. Um, and then the second one has access to all the projects. And that's because if you're using something like Terraform, uh, you need it to have access to, to the APIs, obviously. And there's 
other ways you can get around that if you want to run Terraform inside each perimeter separately, but that's outside the scope of what we're talking about right now. Um, so the two access levels, um, they're referenced in each ingress and egress policy. Um, so that's going to define exactly what you can or cannot do. Um, and then we can go through like the API flow uh, from the bottom. So we have authorized access at the bottom that could be a user service account. And that's going through the internet because all of these services are API based. Um, and you can see that an authorized user only will have access to uh, the data ingestion project, regardless of what IAM access they have. Uh, because this supersedes it. So they can access the processing or storage project. And then you have unauthorized access. So that could be uh, someone who's just not in the access level. Even if they have the IAM credentials, they won't be able to access anything. Um, so, so that's the, the real power of VPC service controls um, is regardless of, uh, of your IAM permissions, you can protect against uh, data exfiltration. So you can see on the storage side and the data storage uh, project, no one will be able to export data, even if they're inside the project, because the egress rules don't allow it. Um, and then uh, no one else who, you know, even has the owner role, which is like a, an admin role, uh, will be able to do anything. It doesn't matter what IAM permissions they have, because it's just not allowed. So do other clouds have this? So AWS, not really. They have uh, SCPs and permission boundaries, kind of, but it's not as powerful. Azure, not to my knowledge, uh, they compare VPC service controls to basically what they have AWS private link, which is inaccurate, but you know, that's Azure. Um, Oracle, I got, they sued me for asking. Um, so the best of my knowledge, I don't think anything like this exists. And it's probably because GCP is just designed differently. For example, VPCs are global by default. Uh, you don't need to do anything to make them global. Load balancers can be global with uh, you know one switch because uh, it's just designed that way. So let's talk about some limitations. So authorized access won't be prevented, obviously. Um, so someone who is authorized uh, at the IAM level and at the VPC service control level can obviously exfiltrate data. So it doesn't it's not really designed and it's not going to prevent an insider threat. If you make a perimeter too permissive, uh, you're going to increase the risk of data exfiltration. Uh, it's There's administrative overhead, so I don't recommend putting them on every project. And then also uh, one perimeter per project, so you can't make a 1997 legacy moat around all of your projects and then also uh, perimeters on each one. Um, but to prevent uh, exfil from authorized access, so one way is to have compensating controls like monitoring network egress bandwidth or IPs of users connecting. Um, and, and still you can have access levels that restrict things to certain siders anyway, regardless of identity. Uh, but then the better option is to have console and API access through a VDI, which is very annoying, but it works. Um, because then if someone has authorized access to BigQuery, they can copy and paste whatever they want. It's not gonna leave the VDI. So let's recap quickly. Uh, VPC service controls are a powerful tool to add an additional layer of security. They excel at preventing data exfiltration and can also help guard against IAM misconfigurations and privilege escalation. Uh, so like someone being granted too much access, uh, it will still not be able to perform the action or can guard against identity compromise. So for example, someone steals user credentials and you have an access level that requires certain site range, they still won't get access. So let's tell another story of a fictional company worth a few billion dollars. Uh, seven months ago, companies alerted to a critical vulnerability in a public facing service. It doesn't patch it because it's a large enterprise and they would need 10 managers to approve it. Senior management was made aware of this problem, so they just hired consultants to implement uh, VPC service controls um, around all projects containing data. Six days later, security teams don't get any alerts. Nothing happens and everyone goes home as usual. The company is operating as healthily and unethically as it always had, scraping and collecting our data without our consent. Everyone lived happily ever after. 
So the only question left to ask is, why aren't you using VPC service controls? Um, so that's it. Uh, I'm supposed to give you a feedback link if you want to leave me feedback. Uh, if you want to email me about anything, there's my email. Um, and that's it. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. Thank you, Elon. Are there any questions from the audience? Yeah, I was just curious, like, how effective are these uh, sort of in the real world, in real life? Are they being deployed effectively? Are they being deployed with overly permissive rules because of the administrative overhead? Like, how do you see them actually being used? Yeah, one, one thing that motivated me to give this talk was that it was not implemented correctly. I mean, part of it is that uh, it's hard to do correctly. The other part is it's, I mean, it's just hard to do, period, because it's confusing. There's a lot of components, especially when you're bolting it on to something existing, it's very difficult. One thing I didn't mention is that it supports something called dry run mode. So it's non-enforcing. So you'll get violation alerts, but it won't actually block anything. So that will allow you to implement them without worrying about breaking anything. Um, they are effective if they're implemented correctly. Obviously, I'm biased as a consultant, so I would say, you know, if you don't know how to do it, then hire someone who knows how to do it, uh, like us. But um, but they definitely do work. Um, I've seen people Im implement them cor incorrectly, like I said, like literally like a moat. So they put one perimeter around their entire, uh, you know, perimeter of the organization, which is not really effective. Um, but I've seen, you know, and recommended companies uh, implement it well so they have you know something like a high trust and low trust project with vpc service controls around those uh which is pretty cool so but they are very effective any other questions from the audience so i have one question for you how are you managing to keep all of the permissions straight <laughs> with inheritance and gcp i know it gets complex so yeah so i mean luckily and Unluckily, they're kind of separate things. Um, uh, IAM inheritance can be challenging, um, but at least through the console, it's very easy to see what's what. But I would say your best bet is to manage everything with Terraform, and that's what I always recommend, um, especially IAM policies, which is a lot of upfront work, especially uh, if you don't have them ready, which most people don't. But that is easily the easiest way um, to, to manage things, especially in, in GCP. Um, but luckily with VPC service controls, it's just all organization level. So you don't have to worry really about inheritance or anything like that. But when you do have clashes with IAM and VPC service controls, sometimes it makes it tough to understand what's going on, but the denial messages are pretty verbose. So it's, you know, it's not too hard to debug what's going on. Well, I think we've covered all the questions. Thank you so much, Ilan. All right, no problem. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right.